So there guys, welcome back to Shadowrun. This is where we left off. Um, what were we doing? We explored a few of these places, didn't we? We chatted to a few guys, we tipped the dancer. Um, there's a U-barn platform that goes down there, but I feel like we don't want to go down there. Because uh, it probably just leads to another area that we don't need to be in. Um, there's definitely some people we haven't talked to yet. So let's have a bit of a wander around. I feel like when we came out of our base... There we go. Yeah, I remember seeing this big guy. Was that the thing that leads to our base, or was that it? The safe house, that's the thing that leads to our base. Okay. So we can talk to this big guy. Just before we do, is there anyone down here that we haven't talked to? No, we're good. Right, okay. Let's talk to this big guy, see what his story is. What's his name? Donations for the soup kitchen have slowed down, Samuel. I'm not surprised. Altruism often comes with an expiration date. Oh, we can talk to let's, In fact, let's scrap it. Let's talk to him first. Oh, wow. There's an orc. At the sound of your approach, the orc turns to face you. He wears a severe expression, but there is kindness in his eyes. Guten Tag, elf. Can I help you with something? Uh, I couldn't help over here in your conversation. I take it that you've been a charity of some sort. He nods. Yes, it isn't much, but we do what we can. Such as? Give me specifics. He clears his throat and begins to count off on his fingers. In the past several years, I've established a shelter where the dispossessed can sleep, a soup kitchen to feed the hungry, and a library for the people of the Coos Bazaar to better themselves. It isn't much, I admit, but it's a start. Uh, and then the volunteer guy, I'm guessing is this dude, says, uh, A good start, Samuel. You mustn't be so hard on yourself. There are limits to what one man, even a determined man, can accomplish. This is true. He nods to the orc at his side. Thankfully, some of the residents that I've helped over the years have come back around to help me. I've got 15 assorted orcs and trolls from all around the cruise bazaar working with me now. They help me man the soup line, stock the library shelves, and to do all of the hundreds of other little things that a community organization needs done every day. These extraordinary individuals are living proof that what we do here has value. They are my inspiration to continue forward. She beams at the compliment, for my body language is clear that she idolizes Beckenbauer. Now, do you have any more questions? If not, I will bid you good day. I don't wish to sound self-important or rude, but there are many pressing matters that demand my time. Fifteen assorted orcs and trolls. That'll probably... Surely that's just going to piss him off if I say that. But we'll do it anyway. Let's take a rather narrow view of what we do. Yes, it is true that my assistants are all members of the goblinoid races. It's also true that before they accepted my help, they were thieves, gangers, and deadbeats. This is not because they were bad people. This is because those of us with goblinoid traits are feared, mistreated, and denied gainful employment by a society that hates us. I hire only goblinoids because mainstream human society has created a need for me to hire only goblinoids. The orcs and trolls of the crews of Bazaar deserve a workplace where they will be treated with dignity and respect. All that being said, our services are available to all. We wouldn't turn a desperate person away regardless of that person's metatype. Even humans, the most privileged of all races, are welcome at our door. Isn't that what's most important? Yeah, I agree with him. Okay, fair dues. He nods slightly. Thank you for saying so. Now, is there something else you'd like to talk about? Uh, do we want to donate to this guy? I feel like we're a good guy. Are you accepting donations? Yes, of course. We're actually desperate for them, truth be told. People seem more intent on taking care of themselves than they are in providing for the less fortunate. Of course, these concepts are not unrelated. As poverty rates increase, so does the crime rate. Assisting the needy increases the quality of life for all. Uh, I disagree, but whatever. <laughs> in, any, in any event, our shelter has some basic needs that are desperately needed to be filled. The walls of the shelter are not insulated, and new blankets would go a long way towards keeping our guests healthy and comfortable. Ideally, we would like to purchase some space heaters as well. With 250 new yen, we could make the purchase. Whatever you can spare would be the most appreciated. I think we can spare 250 new yen. I think we have that. Samuel's eyes widen. This is incredibly generous. Thank you, my friend. Uh, not a big deal, Sam. Do good with it. With this donation, we have reached our first goal. Thank you so much for your kind assistance. I'll put your contribution to work stocking the shelves with blankets and heaters. That's fine, mate. Please do not downplay your contribution. You have shown kindness at the time and few others will. That means something. It means a great deal. Let's talk about something else, because I'm not giving you any more money. <laughs> uh, I'm done, mate. Cheers. You're welcome. Enjoy your 250 space creds, or whatever they are. New Yen. 
Let's see what Lane has to say. He looks like a big guy. Whoa, what is he? What is he? My god. Before you stands a troll. Oh wow, he's a troll. Shit. Before you stands a troll, though it is a stretch to say he is standing at all. His great mass is barely held upright by two vintage prosthetic legs, along with a crutch under one arm. His body clicks and hums with every shift of his weight. Despite these disabilities, his eyes are sharp and calculating. What a troll sound like. It's got to be a pretty deep voice, hasn't it? I know you. Uh, if you know Monica. Sure, I know Monica. You one of hers, then? Uh, there's something you should know about Monica. We should tell people. Something happened to her on the run. Is that a question? It's hard to read this guy. I'm afraid so. There have already been whispers. Yeah, okay. I had a feeling besides. Monica almost always comes around after a run to check on everybody. She's long overdue, and now you are here. And now, uh, and now here you are in her place. So she's either severely wounded or outright dead. Which is it? It's uh, outright dead, mate. The grizzle, to gr uh, la 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 la. the grizzle troll nods grimly. The servos in his prosthetics complain as he lets loose a heavy sigh. Now that is a shame. She was one hell of a runner, that one. And a good friend. Uh, I'm Slick, by the way. Good to meet you, Slick. Name's Alexi Lane. Nice. Uh, is that a name I should know? No, I suppose not. Just the way I like it. Oh, I'll leave you be then, mate. Okay. <laughs> Guess that ends that conversation. Uh, fine. Let's slip down this way. Oh, where's this guy come from? He wasn't there before. Who are you? The dwarvish tech vendor smiles at you with practiced ease, her arm and eyes twinkling with the glare from a dozen trid screens. She speaks an eclipse heavenly accented German. Oh, please, no. I can't. I can't do a heavenly accented German. <laughs> Welcome to the data... No, I can't do it. Welcome to the data haven. Can I help you with something? Um, it's just... If I do it, it's just going to go Indian. I can't I can't maintain German accent. Uh, what is she? The data haven. I need some tech. I'm on a tight schedule. Show me what you've got. What have you got? What is tech? What is this? What does this do? We reduce alarm state by four. Oh, so this is for when we're in the matrix. We don't actually have a decker yet, though. So there's no point buying anything until we get a decker and find out what he's got, because I don't know what any of this shit does. So... There you go. Uh, right, so obviously we need to go back to the cafe. Can we talk to you? Are you a thing? No. Let's finish our explorations. I don't think there's much we haven't explored. There's the Talismonger's shop. The Talis Kramer. Uh, I think that's it. We checked this area. Okay. We'll have a quick look in the Talismonger's shop. See what that's about. Oh, look. A guy just appeared. This is all very mysterious. People keep appearing. Hello, David. What's your deal? A pair of round eyes peer up at you from under the hood of a grime-smeared winter coat. You recognise him as David, one of the crew's bizarre street kids. If you had to guess, you'd place him in his mid-teens, though it's difficult to tell beneath the grime and acne marking his face. You've seen him following Monica around between runs, chasing her heels like a lost puppy. She always seems to have a soft spot for the kid. Ahoy, oh, Slick. Have you seen Monica around? I've been looking all over for her. Uh, I'm afraid I have some bad news for you, kid. The kid blinks a blank expression on his face. She's dead, isn't she? Uh, it was horrible. There was blood everywhere. <laughs> I'm sorry, kid. We all are. Yeah, look, I, I think I want to be alone right now. Okay, David. You be alone. Come to come to grips. We're just going around telling everyone that Monica's dead. Here we go. The Talismonger's shop. Can we... We can't actually go in and look around. It looks pretty interesting, though. Uh, absinthe or absinthe, depending on how how you want to pronounce it. Something about the young elf behind the counter makes your breath catch in your chest. She's lovely to look at, but it's a strange kind of beauty. Her eyes are large and luminous and possibly green. 
And she looks up at you. You can see that her eyes are flecked with iridescent gold. Dragon! She's a dragon! She might not be a dragon. Hello, and welcome to... Does that say Algernon's? Algernon's. Perhaps I can help you with something. Oh, shit! As she smiles up at you, her eyes... Oh, no, that's not her voice. As she smiles up at you, her eyes fixed on yours. A curious feeling of weightlessness fills your chest. It feels as though you're floating in a warm, calm sea. <gasps> a gentle current pulls you closer to absinthe, and the sensation is pleasant. As you drift, the golden specks in her eyes begin to move. Fuck! No, look deeper into her eyes. Fuck! Are we just, are we just completely fucked our game up? The golden specks in the elves' eyes shift and swirl, slowly picking up speed. It's mesmerizing. All at once, the specks explode into light and color. Absinthe's eyes now fill your field of vision, and it feels as if you're drowning in an alien sea. The patterns traced by the shimmering specks in her eyes are kaleidoscopic, enchanting, nearly impossible to turn away from. You are lost. Your entire world has been reduced to a churning vortex of green and gold. Dimly, you become aware that something is happening. Oh, she's robbing us. You feel your body being buffeted by unseen forces, and suddenly everything goes black. Piss! What happened? Slowly and painfully, you struggle your way back to consciousness. The shop's owner, Algernon, is peering down at you with an expression of concern on his face. Absam stands behind him, an expression one of embarrassment. Welcome back, friend. Algernon extends a hand to help you to your feet. Absim shifts slightly to allow you to stand. What, what was that? What happened? My fault and my apologies. Sometimes when I daydream, I bring others along for the ride. It was unintentional, yes, but there was no harm done. Correct? You'll be fine. Um, No harm done, I guess? If you excuse me, I'm going to stand in the corner for a while. Wow. Uh, that was trippy. Algernon. What, what's, what's crackling, Algernon? Greetings, young elf. I've already changed your voice, Algernon. Never mind. The elf's voice is smooth and silk and rich as clotted cream. Something about him instantly puts you at ease. I am Algernon Halfdream, the owner of this establishment. In my shop, you will find only the finest in magical paraphernalia. Now tell me, how may I serve you? Magical paraphernalia. I'm not really a magician. That's Dietrich's line of shit. But we want to have a look at your shit, if we can. Oh, wow. Like, all sorts of spells and shit. Oh, cool. Da, 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 da. This is all amazing stuff, but we can't use any of it. Cool, thanks for showing me, Algernon. Can I ask you a question as well? Uh, you in luck, have a great many answers. Uh, what's the deal with Absinthe? Absinthe is a friend, nothing more. She hops out around the shop where the fancy strikes her. She's nobody's assistant and I'm no one's master. But her eyes. He pauses for a moment, considering. I believe that they suit her personality. <laughs> wow. Okay. Should we talk to her again? Hey, Absinthe. Absinthe keeps her eyes hidden from view. Please, excuse me, I have work to do. Oh, okay, fine. Fine, I'm out of here, you crazy magical bastards. We will no longer be sniffing around the Talismonger shop. That was dangerous business. We need to be careful. We need to get more willpower. I feel like that's that's clearly a, a downside of our personality is that we're very easily mind controlled. Um, I'll tug. We've been out with recently data taps and shit. What's going on? The man behind the counter has the broad smile and open reading. No, we know this. Um, I finish with your little trifle here, Buragazi. Um... Ah, very good. I assume you had no difficulties. Uh, easy, just like you said. Oh, should we tell him about the modified one? Yeah, let's tell him. He laughs. Of course they were. I would be surprised if they weren't. This is Berlin, after all. In the flux, everyone spies. If you do not spy, how will you know who is in power and who will be in power next? If you are to stay here, offend him, you must get used to it. Those who, ent <coughs> Sorry. who enters the Turkish bath will sweat, as my uncle Tedama always says. Nevertheless, I shall have one of my people look into it. Wait, there's more. I listened in on the tap and heard something. It might be important. His eyes... He eyes you closely, amused. Oh, tell me, oh listener at keyholes, what did you hear on this surveillance tap you found? I couldn't make out much. An a woman and a high-pitched man. They seemed pleased Monica was out of the picture. A Turk's face falls. News travels fast in Berlin. Those two are known to me. Is there more? 
The woman got a call. She talked about a council meeting tonight, decided they should make a move. Then she was drowned up by heavy machinery. He nods grimly. Most excellent. It is indeed fortuitous that you discovered this information, though it is not unexpected. I will have one of my people attend this council meeting and report back. Sweet. Um, yeah, keep me in the loop. Sounds good. Keep me in the loop. With that out of the way, let us return to our pressing business. He backs a stream of rapid fire Turkish, and the gum chewing young woman comes hurrying out to the counter. The menu for her, Amsel Uncle. Can he hand you a folded piece of paper? Inside is a memory stick. Please extend my consolations to him. The death of Fraulein Schaefer must have hit him hard. Bragazzi gives Kami a, no a small nod and she hurries out of the room. When she is gone, he returns his attention to you. Please express my condolences as well. I only just heard the news. Monica was an important part of this community. He frowns. Few knew how important. The memory stick Kami just handed you should contain... Oh, sorry, that's his voice. The memory stick Kami just handed you should contain all the information Herr Amsel requires from our chef in the field. Should you require my services in the future, you know where to find me. Until then, good day. And that's it. So we got a memory stick out of him. Sweet. Let's take the memory stick back to Paul uh, and find out what's, what's shizzling, basically. Oh, I see. It lights up yellow so you can tell that you're meant to be there for a primary quest. That's pretty handy. Pretty handy indeed. Let's go back into our safe house. Okay. Oh, yeah, and there's the yellow blob. So, yeah, we take it directly to Paul then, I guess. And let's see what we've learned, what we can learn about Hair Winters. Oh, wow, the, the gang's all here. Can I zoom in? Oh, yeah. Look at this. Glory, everyone's favourite. Uh, Iger, who's kind of cool. And Dietrich, who oh, I don't mind. He's okay. And Paul Amsel, who's a bit shit. Slick! Amsel peers at you apprehensively. His eyes are bloodshot, his expression grim. Did you get the information about Green Winters? Yeah, I spoke to Altog. He gave me this memory stick. Let us see what his, let us see what his agent has to say. Amsel snaps the memory stick from your hand and slots it into his computer terminal. It's just full of porn. What's going on? He navigates a series of command line menus and a wall of amber text floods the screen. Amsel scans it, mouthing the words as his eyes flip back and forth. Bragazzi's agent tailed Green Winters to a hotel in the cesspool of a Kiev called Dragon Keeper. Maybe. That sounds like Dragon Keep to me. <laughs> the hotel is called Das Kessel House. It is a renovated factory nestled deep in the heart of Dragon Keeper. It appears that Winters is holed up there. Recently, there was some contention between two gangs over control of this neighbourhood. Due to the gang violence, the agent refused to follow Winters inside of the hotel, but he confirms that he is still inside. Well, what are we waiting for? Iger slings a rifle over her shoulder with a single spare motion. Gear up, people. <laughs> Metal gear up, people. We have a hotel to raid. Glory and Dietrich pause. Exchange looks with Paul. Just a moment, Iger. Amsel rises from his chair, drawing himself to his full, how uh, full height. Even so, he has to crane his neck to look her in the eye. You are an excellent soldier, and nobody questions your competence in the field. Your loyalty to this team is equally commendable. That said, we believe that Slick is the right choice to lead the team. Dun dun dun! There's a long pause before Iger speaks. When she does, her voice comes out dull and flat. What? Don't mistake this decision for a reprimand. Monica considered your contributions to the team to be invaluable. But we all know that she wasn't comfortable putting a soldier in charge. Iger speaks through clenched teeth. Her words are measured, but her expression is livid. This is unbelievable. You want to put the rookie in charge? Again? She shakes her head. Don't you people learn from your mistakes? Slick is the reason we're still alive, Iger. He kept us together. He led us out of there in one piece. Making him your golden boy. She sounds tired, resigned, but above all, disappointed. This is more of your fluck state idiocy at work, isn't it? Dietrich reaches out, puts his hand on her shoulder. It's it's what Monica believed in. Iger's voice tightens. For a moment, her control slips and her face contorts in grief. Yeah, look where that got her. She straightens to her full height. Let me give you a piece of advice. In the field, only two things matter. The mission and the survival. Everything else is a distraction. Your ridiculous politics have no place on a shadow run. Dietrich manages a smile. 
<laughs> what can I say? We're German. We have a history of strong political views. I get sighs. The tone of resignation returns to her voice. <laughs> Screw it. Let's put an end to this. I've got the skill and the experience to lead this team. Slick, on the other hand, was appointed by Monica as a joke. Wow. If you'd rather take the lead, I'll abide by that. But I want to hear each of you say it. Monica, Monica, not Monica, Iger. Iger, Iger, Iger. They already have, you just weren't listening. You stay out of this. She stabs an armoured finger into your chest, hard. The moment she raises her hand to you, Dante's ears lay back and he lets out a low growl. Reflexively, she takes a half step back. <laughs> I think we've heard what Dante has to say. As for my part, Slick saved our lives back there. You may not believe it, but he did. The way I see it, that means I follow his lead a while longer. Glory's voice is uncharacteristically gentle. I trust in Monica's judgement. <laughs> Therefore, I trust in Slick's judgement. The discussion is finished, Iger. I'm still speak softly, but his tone is firm. Slick will take Monica's place as the leader of this team. Um, Got a few options here, guys. Monica's death is as vengeance. I intend to see it done. We'll run over our heads. I'll do whatever it takes to keep this team Monica's legacy alive. That includes taking your advice, Iger. When the challenge is simple, work so I get paid. Uh, great. Hey, Iger, could you grab me a side calf? Wow. <laughs> Let's not do that. Um... Yeah, let's go with this one. I like this sort of middle ground option. I could give gives you a small nod. That's big of you. She looks from Dietrich to Glory to Amsel, finally down at Dante. Then she sighs. I don't agree with this decision, but I will respect it. She nods again, more decisively this time. Slick takes the lead then. Conversation closed. It's time to move on. We need to focus on chasing down Green Winters. Indeed, I have transferred the information that we received from Alto to the computer terminal in the next room. It used to be Monica's personal workstation, Slick. Now it is yours. Monica kept a variety of notes and dossiers on that machine. I would suggest reviewing her notes when you have the time. Amsel turns his attention away from you and back to his computer screen. Good hunting. I will eagerly await your return. I wouldn't suggest... Oops, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't suggest driving to Drogan Keeper. The, ro the roads aren't safe. Taking the U-Bahn would be faster anyway. Uh, when I want your opinion, I'll ask for it. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, there was a great uh, fucking t-shirt I saw once that said, uh, if I wanted your opinion, I'd have said, oi, twat face, what's your opinion? <laughs> right, thanks for the tip, Iger. The U-Barn it is. We'll take that tip. I like I like it. We'll go through the U-Barn. Iger nods, then turns to check her equipment. Check your equipment. The rest of the group disperses in turn. Okay, right. Whoa, shit happened. You now command a team of shadow runners. When traveling to a new mission locations, you will be able to choose which members of your team to bring and modify their loadout for the run. Sweet! When members of your team become permanently incapacitated on a mission, they'll be automatically extracted for emergency medical care. Sweet. They'll be patched up and ready for action the next time you turn to your safe house. Avoid this loss of firepower by always carrying some Boomona trauma kits into the field. These can be purchased at the street docks office in the Cruise Bazaar. Okay, sweet. Wow, well, we are now in charge of this team of Shadow Runners. There's like two what, yellow things there. I guess one's the exit and the other is the terminal. I'm guessing that's the terminal. Wow, so that was pretty cool. Um, I'm not going to start looking through all the notes on the terminal. We'll do that next episode. So next episode, we'll check up notes, see what's on there. Um, and then I guess we'll head out on our first official sort of shadow run with us in charge. Cool stuff. Uh, so I'm going to save the game. Let's have a look. Uh, if I can remember. Floppy disk. Uh, save game. And save over second slot. Make sure it saves correctly. There we go. So, save complete. I'm going to see you guys next time. Bye-bye.